The M4 Sherman was an American medium tank designed first to allow the Allies to compete with German engineering during World War II. In order for this to happen, it was mass-produced to the point where it became one of the most iconic tanks to ever exist, but also one of the most produced. Noting its effectiveness, the Americans started creating new tanks, or should I say variants, to the point where there was a Sherman for each particular situation. In today's video, we will take a look at the weirdest designs American engineers went for. The first variant is called the Sherman Crab. It was used as a demining device during World War II. As the Germans were known to mine the occupied lands, the Americans had to come up with an idea to counter them. That's where the crab was born. It used a simple yet tricky mechanism. A huge tube is mounted vertically at a good distance from the tank, covered with chains. When the latter starts to turn, the chains will extend and rub the ground, which will have the effect of touching the mines and thus making them explode. Since those mines are at good distance from the tank, the latter can, thanks to this tool, detonate them without risking its own life. This tool proved its effectiveness so well that many countries all around the world are still using it today. For example, you could take a look at the Kodiak from the Royal Dutch Army. The second variant is an amphibious one called DD tank or duplex drive tanks. DD tanks worked by erecting a flotation screen around the tank which enabled it to float and had two propellers powered by the tank's engine to drive them in the water. They were first introduced by the British, but the concept was taken away by the Americans to equip their Germans with such technology. Unfortunately for them, as the Germans were not sealed correctly, most of them sunk before making it to their destination. This caused the project to be lost until the comeback of amphibious tanks specially designed for such missions. This variant is probably the deadliest from this list and went through two stages. The first one is called Calliope, in memory of the Greek goddess of epic poetry. By the name, I think you already understand where this is going. It consisted into fixing a rocket launcher on top of a regular Sherman in order to enable it to carry out barrage fires. This system featured 60 rockets, each being 4.5 inches wide. This was already deadly, but not enough. That's why Americans decided to create an upgraded version of this tank called T-40 Whizbang. It could hold 27.2 inch rockets and, unlike the Calliope used in 1943, the Whizbang saw combats later on during the year 1944. It was not mass produced, as its test showed that firing the rockets could potentially harm the crew. On top of that, a well-aimed bullet could have made the rockets blow up before they were launched, becoming a real threat to German infantry. Now, let's talk about what will go down in history as the greatest poker move concerning the German. The extremely light tank you see on those photos, carried by a 4 crew member, is actually not a real tank, but rather an inflatable copy. Inflatable tanks saw significantly more use during World War II by both the Allies and the Axis. German forces used it to practice and also for training exercises, whereas the Americans used it to bait and scare the Germans into thinking the Allies had much more tanks than they really had. There were two main reasons for inflatable tanks. The first one was to make the enemy think and believe that you had more tanks than in reality, and the second one was to be able to hide and downplay the location of real tanks that were used for crucial operations. This allowed both sides to save some tanks, but also spare lives by preventing some battles to happen. Now, it's time for us to analyze what could be considered a war crime to drive on the battlefield, aka the Sherman Crocodile. Unlike a traditional tank, the Americans mounted both a regular gun and a flamethrower instead of only a gun. The idea was to be able to burn down forests in the Pacific where allies were fighting Japan forces. It was an extremely deadly weapon, as it used a liquid that burned as soon as it was released from the gun, allowing the German to burn down entire villages in which German troops could be hiding. The tank became so popular, the Americans still used it till the Vietnam War on a tank called the M67. The last variant is called Hobart's Funnies, and it's more of a category than a specific tank. They were all part of a division controlled by Hobart, and it was the first time tanks designed specifically for combat engineering went to battle. There are several variants that this video shows you, and there is truly nothing else to add. It went from bridge makers to bulldozers, etc. Thanks to those, a new category of tanks was born, 
allowing the Allies to overcome the difficulties related to terrains, destroyed buildings and such. This video is now over. If you enjoyed, feel free to subscribe, like and share. And if you feel like I'm missing some informations, feel free to correct me in the comments. Bye.